If you're like me, you probably spent too many nights lying awake, staring at the ceiling, wondering what could go wrong in the cloud. Are all of your apps really secure? Did you leave any firewall ports open? Or what happens if you get hacked? But no matter what keeps you up at night, the solution is simple, secure connectivity. And Azure Virtual Desktop has already done a great job at this with the Reverse Connect and RDP short path methods. But what I'm gonna show you today takes things to a whole nother level. When you go into your host pools here in the Azure portal, you're gonna see that there is a new networking option inside your host pool blade. In here, you'll find a firewall and virtual network tab along with a private endpoint connection. And since these AVD private endpoints are in public preview, you can't do anything with them yet. So you need to click over here so that you can enable the service in your subscription. Just search for the word private, and then down over here, you wanna check the box for Azure Virtual Desktop Private Link Public Preview. Then click the register at the top. With that out of the way, let's talk about AVD connectivity. At this stage of the preview, AVD private endpoints have not yet been validated with RDP short path. So we're only going to talk about things in the reverse connect context. But don't worry, RDP short path is on the roadmap, so stay tuned. Now, private endpoints allow you to connect to Azure's platform services, which are normally only accessible over the internet using private network IP addresses. This is done by creating a network card on your virtual network with one of your IP addresses. Then traffic sent to that NIC will route directly to the service. So when it comes to Azure Virtual Desktop connectivity, you have to think about this like a triangle. At the top, you have the AVD cloud service itself. And on this side, you have the Azure Virtual Network and your session host virtual machines that live in the cloud. And on this other side, you have your AVD clients. And those clients could be in one of your corporate offices or anywhere else in the world. And with this latest update, you can now set up AVD in three ways. The first option is standard AVD. Your session hosts and your clients connect to the AVD service over the public internet. So business as usual. And this is super easy to set up because it's pretty much done already for you. From here, it gets a little bit more complicated. Because AVD connectivity is a triangle, you can set up just the session host to be private and the clients can still be public or both of them can be private. So for this second scenario, let's just make the session host private. Here in the host pool on networking, you wanna uncheck the second box. Now click the second tab for private endpoints and then add a new private endpoint. Be sure that this is the same subscription and resource group and region where your host pool is located. And then we need to give this a name. So I suggest something like the name of the host pool dash HP dash private or whatever your standard naming convention for something like this is. Then click next. Now the connection option over here is gonna be your only choice, so click next. And now we need to associate the private endpoint with a virtual network. That's how Azure knows where to put the network card with your private IP address. Now before you do, I wanna show you one other thing over here by clicking static. These are the AVD components that will each get a private IP address for each pool that you're setting it up for. So depending on how many pools you have, you might wanna carve out a separate subnet for your private endpoints. Because if you have a lot of host pools, you will have a lot of IP addresses allocated for private endpoints. And by doing it in a separate subnet, you won't take away the IP space from your session host VMs. So that was just so you understand what's going on. We'll flip it back to dynamic. And then we wanna click the dropdown for the virtual network, select the network where your session host VMs are located along with its subnet. Now, currently for network policies, these functions aren't really used in AVD private endpoints yet, but if you are interested in that, comment below with the word AVD network policy so I can let the product team know that you're interested. Now at the bottom, we have application security groups, and I'm gonna skip that for now, but just so you know, ASGs allow you to group VMs together to make it easier to apply rules in your NSGs, which are your network security groups. And that'll really come in handy once we have network policies, but for now, I'll just skip it and click next. Here we're gonna create a new Azure private DNS zone, and that's required for your private endpoints. And the name is already set here for you. So we're gonna click next and now add all of your standard tags. 
And don't forget about the CM resource parent tag so you can track all of your AVD costs in one rolled up place. Then create. Now there's one additional step here if you use a firewall, a network security group to control your traffic in your network. Here's my network security group and you can see I've got a rule right here that allows my subnet to talk to the service tag of Windows Virtual Desktop. And notice that that is allowed. To make sure that my traffic never leaves Azure and goes out to the public internet to talk to that service tag, I'm gonna change this to be denied. Everything else stays the same. And that's how simple it is to make your session host private, but leave your clients able to communicate through the internet to the service. Now let's do the full lockdown, forcing the session host and the clients to only use AVD private endpoints. Back in our host pool, you'll wanna uncheck both boxes. Everything else will be exactly the same as it was in the last step, so rinse and repeat. Once that's done, go over to your workspace, click on networking and uncheck this box as well. Then click up here, we need to add two more private endpoints. Use the same subscription, resource group, and region, and we'll give this the name of hostpool-ws-private, and then click next. For the sub-resources, you have two options. We have feed and global. So we'll choose feed this time, and I'll explain more about global in a minute because it's a little bit tricky. On the networking page, choose the same network that you did before, and I'll just change this again to static so that you can see that we're using two more IP addresses. So, so far we have six in total, and we'll just set that back to dynamic, which is what I'd recommend you use, and then click next. This will use the same private DNS zone as before, so click next again, add your tags, and then create. So now let's talk about the global endpoint. No matter how many virtual networks you have, if they're all peered together, you only need one global endpoint to rule them all. But if you have two networks or more that are not peered together, then each one would need its own global endpoint. With that said, the product team's recommendation is that you set up a standalone workspace for this global endpoint. That way it's not connected to any particular host pool. This way, if you have multiple pools and you go to delete one of them, you don't risk deleting your global endpoint and breaking everybody. So I have a workspace here that's called standalone-ws, and in networking, I'll uncheck the box, click the private endpoint at the top, fill it out just like you did before. On the resources tab, change the global and click next. Pick a network that's not gonna be deleted with any particular AVD workload, and then look over here at the static setting because we've got one additional, bringing us up to a total of seven IP addresses. So we'll flip that back to dynamic, click next, Click next on the private DNS page and add your tags and finally create. Now to make this fully private scenario work, the clients that are in your offices will need to be connected to Azure by either a site-to-site -site VPN or express route. And all of those clients that are roaming the world in the field will need some kind of client VPN so that they can connect privately to your network first and then get to the AVD service. Once complete, everyone can just sign into their AVD clients and launch everything as normal. And this feature is of course a great way to secure Azure Virtual Desktop, but that's not the end of it. There's a whole lot of other layers involved in how to do that. And for all of that stuff, you can check out this compilation video I've got right over here, and I'll see you next time. Happy learning.